we find that the people are concerned about you know, specific things. Only 20% of people think the value of their home is going to go up in the next year. And this from a nation that you know we were taught for a long time and incorrectly, you know, the housing prices always go up. So yeah. there is there is some. Um, adjustment going on there in terms of understanding where the economy is right. to be. That housing bubble where a house became almost a commodity, of course, which was an anomaly, as we all know, because, I mean, I grew up in the 1950s. We had an attached house that hardly went up maybe a percent every once in a couple of years. It didn't go up, you know, 4% a year, as happened in the late 70s uh, in, in California and New York and other places. Uh, maybe things are settling back to reality where a house is a home not an investment, so to speak. But only half of homeowners believe their house is worth more more than the mortgage. Oh, and really? That's a uh, you know that's a tough. What reality. about taxes? Have you polled on taxes? You know, this is an interesting question because we all know that people with less envy those with more, and they want to tax the rich because they feel the rich don't deserve it that they took it from them. But when you analyze, as you know, that eighty percent of taxes are paid by the top twenty percent of uh, earners. And at the lowest 50% of earners pay no taxes, federal taxes at all. If we simply go by polls, eventually uh, the people who earn will be taxed off the map, won't they? You know what? That's that's just a misconception. And it's uh, first of all, most Americans believe that tax cuts are good for the economy. In fact, right they, now, despite... you know, even even the low earners believe that. Yes. Even well, lower, not, not to the same degree. But lower income people are at least as opposed to tax hikes as upper income Americans, and the reason is they simply can't afford it. Um, and one of the other things that happens is when a politician says they'll only tax you know, people over a certain income bracket, people don't believe it. Um, we're going to come out with some polling data in the near future about the idea of having only the wealthy pay uh, you know, for taxes for health care reform. And we're also going to find out how many people think their own taxes will go up as a result of this. And this is something that the cynicism is, is extraordinarily high. And, in fact, we've been tracking a question for the last year and a half, two years, at least once a month. We ask people, who would you rather vote for, a candidate who promised to oppose all tax increases or a candidate who promised to, to oppose all tax uh, increases except for on the wealthy? And it is always very close, just a few points separating those two views one way or the other. So there's not a great desire to just go out and tax the wealthy. Um, it's simply less offensive uh, than applying a tax to everybody. Well, I read, and I don't know who said it, that the idea of taxing the wealthy doesn't appeal to those without much money because they all hope to be wealthy one day themselves. Uh, that was the analysis I read. I think it was a Republican who, who, who came up with that one. I don't know if that's true. We did a poll and we asked people uh, a couple different questions about perceptions of taxes overall. And we found that, and we found this consistently at several points in time, that most Americans believe that nobody, no matter how rich they are, no matter how much they earn, should have to pay more than 25% of their income in taxes combined to federal, state, and local governments. You're kidding. I mean, there is a belief you, you earn it, you should keep it. Well, we're paying in California, if anyone makes a, a decent living at all, we're paying well over 50% of our income in taxes. So we're way off that 25% mark. I wish it were 25%. Well, there's one other area that I find interesting, and I know we're running out of time, which is this. If people who earn money are going to be taxed at a much higher level for this uh, medical re reform bill that's being jammed down our, our throats, I think that uh, um, charitable giving is going to go down drastically. Have you run polls only on the upper income demographic with regard to charitable giving? Well, you know what? We, we have polled the entire population, and most people believe it will hurt charities if, if the tax deductions are limited for charitable giving. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, people have sound instincts. They do understand if you tax something, uh, you're going to get less of it. If you give a preference uh, in a form of a tax deduction, you're going to get more of it. And when you make those changes, people may not know the exact amount, but they know the direction of the change that will take place. Scott Rasmussen, thanks as usual. A very clear analysis of which way the people are heading in the United States of America from the polling standpoint. Thanks again for being with us this Wednesday on the Savage Nation. My pleasure. Thank you.
Thank you. And I hope to make this a regular segment, as I said to you last week, every Wednesday at approximately this time in this segment. That is, uh, the, we're going to try to have Mr. Rasmussen on the show with a polling update. I'll be right back. <laughs> The fusion of entertainment and enlightenment. I'm Glenn Beck, weekdays, noon to 3, on Talk 910 KNEW. All right, welcome back. We're going to shift now to entertainment because, as you well know, a mind as active as mine needs entertainment. And you know I was a big fan of The Sopranos when it came out. In fact, I watch a lot of reruns because it was such a great series. Well, yesterday I flew six hours, and I brought with me <clears throat> the season two DVD that just came out yesterday of a series called Mad Men, which I thought was unbelievable when I first saw it. It's one of my favorite television shows. I don't know how many of you ever watched it, but I'm they call it a mad addict if you're an addicted to it. It's so good. I mean, so many different things. I can't do it in the three, three four minutes I have right now. We hope to have the... He's the director, isn't he, Matthew Weiner? Is he the director of the series or the producer? Producer and director. But he was the writer of many of the best Sopranos episodes, Matthew Weiner. And I used to see the credits and say, gee, this series is better than that one, this segment, than that one. And he was always the one behind the good ones. So when I saw he was behind this, actually, I didn't know who was behind it. I just watched a few series. Basically, it's set in Connecticut and New York City in the 1960s, late 50s, early 60s. And it's about Madison Avenue, a Madison Avenue group. And it's about, you know, a protagonist. And his, the two protagonists are a husband and wife, an ad man and his wife. And he's good looking like a, I don't know, how do you, central casting stud, studly, good looking ad guy, not a hair out of place. And the wife is Miss Perfect, uh, thin, blonde, everything you'd expect. And a lot of her scenes are filmed in uh, horseback stables. You know, she's the ultimate uh, perfect woman. And what goes on behind the scenes in their lives, as you can well imagine, is not exactly perfect, although I think it's pretty much what went on or does go on, or who knows what goes on in the other person's life. You don't really know. But Matthew Weiner, being the writer of the best series, and by, and by the way, in season two, it's interesting, as I was I watched, um, it was a six-hour flight. So I got the whole season two. DVD. I don't know how many of my went. My eyes were hurting. I must have watched it halfway across the country. I couldn't watch it when my eyes almost blew out. But I noticed that the best episodes were written by him, by Matthew Weiner. And some of the weaker ones were not written by him, you know. Anyway, I mean, I'm not here to, you know, break my brain on this. I'm just saying it's entertainment. Mad Men Season 2, they're filming Season 3 right now. But when does Season 3 open, guys? I don't even know. Is it opening already? Coming out soon? It's an AMC series which is very surprising. It's an AMC original. August is the new season three. All right. Well, the women in this, let's go to the women in, in Mad Men. If you've never watched it, I think you're going to want to watch it. The The way women dressed, men haven't, well, men have changed a lot when you consider it. Every man working in an office in Madison Avenue or in New York in general in the late 50s or 60s wore a suit and tie and his hair was trimmed. Uh... Do I have to go any further than what works in the Obama White House today? They look like they blow bubbles and they ride skateboards down the uh, West Wing. So the whole world has changed topsy-turvy. But the women, how they're costumed and how they comport themselves is astounding. The hair, the teased hair, the clothing, the Dagmar breasts that every woman tried to affect, the proper enunciation and the speech and how the interplay between a boss and a secretary, amazing. The power that a businessman had over his employee in those days. He could just fire her summarily and say, I don't think you're cut out for this job. And if she says, well, what did I do wrong? He says, I'd rather not go into you're just not cut out for this job. Today, right away, EEOC, lawsuit, affirmative action, uh, you're an anti-woman. It's unbelievable to watch this. Now, was it a better country or a worse country in this regard? I'll let you decide. Did people appear better or did they appear worse? I'll let you decide. And so, therefore, I suggest that you watch Mad Men for great entertainment value. Because I think if you're like me, you're going to become hooked on it. Maybe it's because I lived in that period. In summary, all I can say is I never could live in that confining world. That world was so repressive that I became who I am because of it. I ran from it. Not to it. 
And believe me, I understood what it would have done to me had I stayed in it. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Savage. Michael Savage. Afternoons 3 to 7 on Talk 910 KNEW and online at 910KNEW.com.